In section 3.3, we'll add to our list of known identities the sum and difference identities for cosine. These identities are useful when the angle of a cosine function is composed as the sum or difference of two angles. First, we will state the identity, and then we will consider how to prove the identity. For cosine of two angles, alpha plus beta, the expansion formula is cosine of the first angle, alpha, times cosine of the second angle, beta, minus sine of alpha times sine of beta. Observe the pattern that when the sign between the two angles in the argument position is a plus. The sign between the terms in our expanded form is a minus. Let's go ahead and construct the proof for this identity. The diagram to the right with the circle will be a useful way to visualize this relationship. On this circle, we have angle alpha and angle beta. So this would be angle alpha plus beta. And we have negative beta constructed here in standard position. We'll name point D as ordered pair 1, 0, and we have other points B, O, A, and C. Now, if we consider angle B, O, D, we can see that the size of that angle is alpha plus beta. Similarly, angle A, O, C, please correct my typos there, angle A, O, C also has a size of alpha plus beta. Since those two angles are equal, then the chords that they represent are also equal. That is, chord BD, opposite the angle of size alpha plus beta, is equal to chord AC, also opposite the angle of size alpha plus beta. Now, as we have learned, we can use the cosine and sine functions to identify the coordinates of a point. Notice point A, who has angle alpha associated with it, has x coordinate cosine alpha and y coordinate sine alpha. Similarly, angle alpha plus beta has x coordinate determined by cosine and y coordinate determined by sine. The only one that's a little different here is point C associated with angle negative beta. We could write that as cosine of negative beta sine of negative beta. But if we apply our even and odd identities, since cosine is even, we can simplify cosine of negative beta as cosine of beta and sine of negative beta as negative sine of beta. With that understanding, let me also remind you of the distance formula. If we have two points in the coordinate plane, x1, y1, x2, y2, then the distance between those two points, which is based on Pythagorean theorem, is given by the square root of the difference in the x values squared plus the difference in the y values squared. Let's begin by applying that distance formula to find the length of segment BD. We're going to find the square root of the difference of the x-coordinates squared plus the difference of the y-coordinates squared. So we can see for point B, the x-coordinate is cosine of alpha plus beta, and for point D, the x-coordinate is 1, so we have the difference between x values squared. We're going to add this to the square of the difference between y values. At point B, the y value is sine of alpha plus beta, and the y value at point D is 0. Now, we can set this equal to the distance of chord AC. As we've already observed, chords BD and AC are equal. So applying the distance formula to chord AC, we have the square root of the x-coordinate of point A, cosine of alpha, minus the x-coordinate of point C, cosine of beta. And we're going to square that difference. Plus, now we have the difference between y-coordinates. The y-coordinate of point A is sine of alpha, and the y-coordinate of point C is negative sine of beta. So we're going to subtract a negative number, which means we're going to add, cancel those two negatives and add sine of beta. Don't forget to square that difference. We're going to find out that when we simplify this equation, it's going to generate the cosine of a sum identity. So let's begin by clearing those radicals. We can square both sides to eliminate those radicals. Then we can carry out several counts of FOIL 
from the leftover radicand. So cosine of alpha plus beta minus 1 times itself generates cosine squared of alpha plus beta. The outside and inside terms would combine to give us minus 2 cosine of alpha plus beta, and the product of the last two terms would give us 1. When we uh, FOIL, well actually this one we can simplify first. The zero is going to go away. When we square sine of alpha plus beta, we simply get sine squared alpha plus beta. On the right side, we'll carry out the FOIL as well. The product of these two terms is going to give us cosine squared alpha for the first two terms. Outside and inside terms combine to give us cosine alpha, cosine beta, and last terms give us plus cosine squared of beta. Now I'm out of room, so I'm going to square this component on the next line. As we FOIL, we'll obtain sine squared of alpha. Outside and inside terms give us plus 2 cosine alpha. Whoops, how about a sine alpha, sine beta? There we go. And the last gives us plus sine squared beta. Working back over to the left side, notice we have cosine squared of alpha plus beta plus sine squared of alpha plus beta. If we apply our fundamental Pythagorean identity, we know that sum is 1. And then if we combine that 1 with the one that's already here, we can simplify the left side as 2 minus 2 cosine of alpha plus beta. We can do a similar operation on the right. Notice we have cosine squared alpha plus sine squared alpha. That's equal to 1. And cosine squared beta plus sine squared beta is also equal to 1. Combining those 1s will give us a constant of 2. Then we have minus 2 cosine of alpha cosine of beta from that first line plus 2 sine of alpha sine of beta. Remember, my goal is to simplify this equation. So notice if we subtract the constant 2 from both sides, it's going to go away. And then all of the terms that remain have a coefficient of negative 2. So I'm going to go ahead and divide the remaining terms each by negative 2. When we simplify, we're going to see that the result, being careful to watch the sign on that one, is our cosine of a sum identity. That is, cosine of alpha plus beta is equal to cosine of alpha times cosine of beta minus sine of alpha sine of beta. So we have verified the cosine of a sum identity. Now let's practice applying this identity on example one. Example 1 says find the exact value. For part A, we're going to evaluate cosine of 105 degrees. Do notice that 105 degrees is not one of our common unit circle angles. However, we could express 105 degrees as a sum of two unit circle angles. For example, we could write this as 60 degrees plus 45. Now we're dealing with cosine of a sum, so we can expand it according to the formula. So recall we take cosine of the first angle, in this case 60 degrees, times cosine of the second angle, 45 degrees, minus sine of the first angle, 60 degrees, times sine of the second angle, 45 degrees. Then we'll be able to evaluate each of those expressions exactly. Cosine of 60 degrees is 1 half, and cosine of 45 is the square root of 2 over 2. Sine of 60 degrees is square root of 3 over 2, and sine of 45 degrees is square root of 2 over 2. We can multiply our fractions, multiplying numerators and denominators, the first product gives us square root of 2 over 4. And for the second product, when we multiply radicals together, we simply multiply the radicands. So square root of 3 times square root of 2 gives us square root of 6. And in the bottom, we have a common denominator or a denominator of 4. Since our two fractions already have a common denominator, we might as well zap them together in a single fraction. Then we have the exact value of the cosine of a non-common uh, angle in degree. 
based on the nature of the result, you can see that's why I want, we don't memorize angles such as 105 degrees. It's not as convenient as the sine and cosine for angles such as 30, 45, and 60. Okay, let's try one in radians. We want to evaluate cosine of 7 pi over 12 exactly. 7 pi over 12 is not a common angle in radians on the unit circle. So we're going to attempt to express it as a sum. Now, as you're first learning this, this may take a little bit of trial and error, but with a little patience and perseverance, you'll be able to figure out the sum. So I'm going to show you that if we take pi over 3 and add it to pi over 4, it does give us 7 pi over 12. Notice to add these two fractions, we'd need a common denominator of 12. If we multiply the bottom by 4, we need to multiply the top by 4. So 4 pi over 12 is the representation of pi over 3. Here we multiplied the denominator by 3, so we'll multiply the numerator by 3. And we can now see 4 pi over 12 plus 3 pi over 12 does give us 7 pi over 12. Now keep in mind as you work your homework, if that sum didn't work, you could try another combination. Just don't give up until you get it. So we're going to expand cosine of 7 pi over 12 as cosine of pi over 3 plus pi over 4. Now we can use our new cosine of a sum identity. We have cosine of the first angle pi over 3 times cosine of the second angle pi over 4 minus sine of pi over 3 times sine of pi over 4. Cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half, and cosine of pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2. Sine of pi over 3 is square root of 3 over 2, and sine of pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2. Notice when we multiply these fractions together, we have square root of 2 over 4 minus square root of 6 over 4. If that looks familiar, it's because 7 pi over 12 is 105 in degrees. So we were actually working the same problem once in degrees and once in radians. Now with the cosine of a sum identity, we'll also be able to recognize this pattern as it pops up um, in different places, especially when we're solving equations later on. So example two, we want to simplify each expression and please correct another typo here on question A. Change that last function from cosine to sine. So looking at this difference, notice the pattern. We have cosine times cosine minus sine times, and after the correction, it's a sine. Also observe the angles repeat 22 degrees, 41 degrees, followed by 22 degrees and 41 degrees. So we can recognize this as the expansion of the cosine of a sum formula. For that reason, we can condense it into a single cosine function by adding the angles. So we're going to condense it as cosine of 22 degrees plus 41 degrees. Then we can add those angles in the argument position and condense this to cosine of 63 degrees. Now remember the problem was not to evaluate the expression, but to simplify the expression. Cosine of 63 it would be a non-unit circle value, and 63 cannot be expressed as a sum or a difference of common unit circle angles. So cosine of 63 is the simplification. Let's go ahead and look at example B. We have cosine of 12 degrees times cosine of negative 38 degrees. Notice this time we have a plus in between. So that's a change from our cosine of a sum expansion formula. And then over here we have, again, the pattern sine times sine. But notice how the angles are different. We have a positive 12 here. We have a negative 12 here a negative 38 here and a positive 38 here. In order to condense this using the cosine of a sum identity, those have to match. So before we condense, we can simplify using our even and odd identities. Recall that cosine is an even function. Therefore, cosine of negative 38 degrees can be written as cosine of 38 degrees. Also, sine is an odd function. So sine of negative 12 degrees is the same thing as negative sine of 12 degrees. Now, the first and second angles match in both the cosine functions and the sine functions. Therefore, it fits the pattern for the expansion of the cosine of a sum formula. We can condense it into a single cosine function of 12 degrees plus 38 degrees. 
This gives us cosine of 50 degrees. Also not a common angle on our unit circle, so we will consider that simplified. Okay, great, we are moving right along. Let's look at example three. Find the exact value of cosine of alpha plus beta if sine of alpha equals negative 7 25ths and sine of beta equals 8 17ths with alpha in quadrant four and beta in quadrant two. Our goal in this problem is to find the exact value of cosine of alpha plus beta. So let's begin by expanding cosine of alpha plus beta with our new formula for the cosine of a sum. We can write this as cosine of alpha times cosine of beta minus sine of alpha sine of beta. According to the given information in the problem, sine of alpha is negative seven over 25. So we can replace sine of alpha with its value. Also, we know that sine of beta is 8 17ths, so we'll be able to replace sine of beta with its value. But at this point, we don't know either cosine of alpha or cosine of beta. We'll have to do a little bit of work to figure those out. When we replace sine of alpha with negative seven over 25, do observe we're replacing the entire function, not the angle alpha. Similarly, sine of beta gets replaced with 8 17ths. I'm not plugging 8 17ths in for beta. Now we can see that in order to answer the original question, we're gonna need to find the value of cosine of alpha and cosine of beta. Let's work on cosine of alpha. Because we know sine of alpha, and we know the relationship between sine and cosine, we can determine cosine of alpha. I'm gonna use the Pythagorean identity. Sine squared of alpha plus cosine squared of alpha is equal to one. Because we know that sine of alpha equals negative seven over 25, we can replace sine of alpha with negative seven over 25 and then square it according to the Pythagorean identity. Then we can solve this equation for cosine of alpha. Negative seven over 25 squared gives us 49 over 625. Again, we're squaring the top and the bottom of the fraction there. We can subtract 49 over 625 from both sides. That will yield the value of cosine squared of alpha. And I'm gonna write that one as 625 over 625 to make it compatible with this fraction, which already has a denominator of 625. Cosine squared of alpha then gives us 576 over 625. We can now take the square root of both sides to solve for cosine of alpha. Just remember, when you take the square root of both sides, you get two possible roots. Cosine of alpha equals plus or minus, square root of 576 is 24, and square root of 625 is 25. Now remember, every angle has a unique cosine and a unique sine. Cosine of alpha here looks like it has two potential values. We have to figure out which one is appropriate. Remember, we're told that alpha is in quadrant four. In quadrant four, cosine is positive. Remember, cosine is related to the x coordinate. X is positive in quadrant four, therefore cosine of alpha is positive. Thus, in our work over here, we can now replace cosine of alpha with its value of 24 over 25. Now we still have a little bit of work to do. We're gonna repeat that same process for cosine of beta. We're given the value of sine of beta and we can use the Pythagorean identity, sine squared of beta plus cosine squared of beta equals one to plug in what we know, that is we know sine of beta is 8 17ths. We can square that and solve this equation for cosine of beta. Eight squared is 64, 17 squared is 289. Now I'm gonna do two steps on this one line here. I'm gonna rewrite that one on the right side as 289 over 289. And at the same time, I'm gonna subtract 64 over 289 from both sides. Thus, cosine squared of beta equals 225 over 289. We're ready to take the square root of both sides, considering both the positive and negative roots. 
cosine of beta then equals plus or minus 15 over 17. So the way we determine or distinguish between the positive or negative is by looking at the location of beta. Beta, we are told, is in quadrant 2. In quadrant 2, cosine is negative. Remember, cosine is associated with the x-coordinate, and the x-coordinate is negative in quadrant 2. So we know cosine of beta has a value of negative 15 over 17. So now we have all the information that we need to solve the original problem. Now over here we have a minus negative, so I'm going to rewrite that as seven, plus 7 over 25 times 8 over 17. Now I don't know about y'all, but my brain's a little bit tired from that, so I'm going to rely on my calculator for the arithmetic part. So I'm just going to type it in, 24 over 25 times negative 15 over 17 plus 7 over 25 times 8 over 17. Now I don't want to approximate this, so I'm going to require that my calculator return the result as a fraction. We have the lovely answer of negative 304 over 425. So we were able to evaluate cosine of alpha plus beta without knowing the value of alpha or beta. And we had to resort to that good old Pythagorean identity to solve for the information that we needed in order to answer the original question. So once again, please add the cosine of a sum identity to your memory bank.